Uh, Jake Eve, Carriage Gail, thanks for coming today. We're here as a small rally called at very short notice. They protest about the imposition of many unvetted males, not only males here in Carlingford, but also we do know that 40% of people claiming refugee status in Ireland come into Dublin Airport claim they have lost their passport. We know that that is a pack of lies. We were told that this whole emergency to do with the asylum crisis, <coughs> we were going to take in uh, women and children from Ukraine, but we also know the government tell us that 40% of the people coming here from Ukraine are young males. And of course, we've all seen the video with these guys who look and they even admit they're from Kashmir, Africa, all around. Now, the, the reason that so many people have great worries about what's going on here in Ireland is the imposition of a large number of unvetted males. And we can see in France and Germany and Sweden and all around Europe that there's been a rash of crime, sexual assaults all around Europe. And of course, women are the ones who suffer. We see there, even there last week in Fermoy, the number of cases that are coming up about what young women who've been sex assaulted and raped in Ireland already. We've got to call that to a stop. Now, my name is Aaron Kelly. I'm president of the Irish Freedom Party. Now, this rally was called it late and at short notice, but history is made by people who turn up. You have turned up. I appreciate that. And for people, who are brave enough to put their head above the parapet and speak up in public and say this has got to stop because this is not good for the safety of our country, for the culture of our country. And also, why is it that Irish people have to go out to work to support other people who have never contributed one cent in our country? Now, the population of Ireland has gone up by one million in 20 years. And some towns of Ireland... In East Wall there, Dublin North Central, Irish people are currently a minority in our own country. In parts of Clare, Liston Varna, you already remember the Christy Murr song from, must be 35 years ago. I remember when I was a kid, uh, Cork, New York, or the Hork, and Glen and Maddie. Well, Liston Varna, Irish people are also a minority there in their own town. And that is unacceptable. We have been, our country has been planted here what less than half a mile from here is King John's Castle, where the British came and they had a plantation. I'm from Derry myself, that we were kicked off our land, lost our land, it was controlled by Britain. Now it seems Ireland South is controlled by Brussels. But just as Cromwell had a plantation in Ireland, now Fianna Fáil, the Irish Troika, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, and Sinn Féin are all happy and they're pleased that Ireland is once again colonized and that there's a new plantation where I'd say, no, a plantation, we never ask for it, we never give our consent it, and it's got to stop. That's enough for me. No. So I'd ask you, I'd like to ask a few people and I'd ask, ask Miss Anne-Marie Gray to speak as well. I'd like to say is, um, Herman, thanks very much for asking me to speak. That's the first thing I want to say about all that's going on in the country. When I came here, first of all, to do the live video a few weeks ago in Carlingford, it wasn't for our own benefit. It was for the benefit of Carlingford, the benefit of the country and the people that were in it. The abuse we have taken has been horrendous over the last few weeks. I have been called a racist, a fascist and also a Nazi for standing up with the Irish flag for my own country and the people that are within it. You will not deter me, and I want to tell you that now. You will not scare me, and you will not threaten me over phone calls at 10 o'clock at night after I do rallies. And I want you to all be aware of that. We are not doing this for a gain for ourselves. We are doing this for the Irish public, okay? Also, people ask me, where did I come from and what do I do? First of all, the first thing I would say to you is, 12 years ago, I took a ma had a massive, massive spinal reconstruction and I never thought that I'd be standing here with you today. And if I was here, I'd be in a wheelchair. Thank God I am walking and I'm able to do what I'm doing today.
First thing I want to say is the reason I'm here is I wanted to give something back. So when I say I give something back, I did a master's in healing and then I went on to do a grand master's in healing and I'm not finished yet. And then, as I say, along the way, I found out what was going on in the country and what I what I seen I didn't like. As I say, we have a trader government. There is no resolution, only get them out. Every single one of them have to go. We have tried to be reasonable, but there's no reasoning with the traders that we have at the moment. So as I say, they're going, whether they want to go or not. The gates are coming down of Dáil Éireann, and they're coming out, as I said before, by the tide. So guys, as I say, I want to thank everybody for standing up for what they believe in because they will not deter me, they will not deter the teams and they will not deter nobody here. And I want them all to know that. And we are standing up. We're not standing up for ourselves. We're standing up for the country. And we want everybody to know that. And so, as I say, guys, we need to all stand up now. And I want them all to know we're not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere. So, guys, as I say, um, that's where I've ended up. And I've been called everything. And all these people that are here have been called stuff as well. We are not going to back down and we are not going away. And I want the people of this country who have already standed up to know that I am so proud of them. I'm so proud of them in, in East Wall, in Wicklow, in Tala. There's a great woman up there in Tala, oh, Bridget. Bridget, you're doing fantastic work and I want you to know that. Also, the people in East Wall, I commend you. I commend the people in Wicklow. You're fantastic. And I want to let you know we will be with you shortly. We will be coming up to you in the next day or two. And I want everybody to know that. I just want everybody to say thanks very much to everybody and keep doing what you're doing. They don't like it, but I want you to know we are on the winning side of this. And I want you to know that. Because no matter what we have to do now, we are going to do it to take down the government. So you get in our way, be prepared for the consequences. And I want you to know that now. So that's all I really need to say. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie Gray uh, from Dundalk. I see the northern twang in my accent as well. They say from the north comes strength, and that's very true. Yep. Now, they have to get together to get... Politically, the only thing politicians understand is money and votes. You take money off them, they get very obstreperous. You take votes off them, they get very, very nervous. So we here, Nice Freedom Party, look to give, seek to provide an alternative to take votes away from the Troika, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and Sinn Féin and give the alternative nationalist parties who believe that Ireland belongs to the Irish people. Yeah. that we belong here, Ireland belongs to us, and the country should be here for the benefit of Ireland and Irish people and nobody else. We are not here to provide free housing, free welfare, and free, le free legal aid for everybody who can land in a plane in Dublin and say the word asylum. We are not idiots, and we have to learn from what. I would like to ask uh, Mr... Paul Fitzsimons from Dublin, also he's come up here to give, there's been rallies and protests around the country, Anne-Marie mentioned a few of them there, Vermoy, East Wall, uh, Killarney, all around the country, and we are, what needs to happen is that every community that has been affected has to stand up and protest against what has been imposed upon them without their knowledge and consent. So ladies and gentlemen, I will give you Mr. Paul Fitzsimons. Go to Magazine, full of us. Thanks, Chairman. I uh, travelled all the way down to Dublin here today just to be with these people, just to speak about what's going on in the country. What's going on in here, we know we have all these illegal fake UGs. 40% of them people come into this country, they have no passports. No passports, we don't know who they are, we don't know who they are. We don't know where they come from. We don't know what they have done in their countries. They could be, you wouldn't know what they were in them countries. But what I will say to you is we have been lied to by the media here in this country for the last three years. And it's been going, well, three years, give or take. We have been lied to about COVID. We've been lied to about vaccine. We've been lied to about everything. And they're just gaslighting the Irish people. We need this to stop. 
I go to all the rallies in Dublin. I haven't spoken at any of the rallies in Dublin because I let other people do the speaking. But I'm down here as a concerned parent in my country. I live in Dublin 15 and my children are afraid. I, I won't let my children walk the streets, walk, walk home from school because of these illegal immigrants that are in the country. As Herman said there, there was a girl raped in Fermoy there or whatever a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago. And she, the only, only reason that child was found was because of her phone was tracked. That child would have died. In East Wall, there was four sexual assaults here on Thursday. Nothing in the media about it. Why is there nothing in the media about it? Because it doesn't suit the media narrative. You video circling out around about Leo Varadka, the media won't talk about that either. Nobody wants to talk about all the stuff that we need to talk about. This government needs to go, and they need to go now. Yeah. Like, we can't wait till 2025. If we wait till 2025, you will not recognize your country. You will not recognize your country. People before profit are talking about putting refugees here, there, and everywhere. Put them in their area. There's someone down there with dogs there just to, just to upset what we're trying to do here. We're, we are concerned parents in Ireland trying to stop this. That's all we're trying to do. And we're not getting the chance to do it. There's not enough people coming out. People need to stand their ground here and people need to say, no, enough is enough. These people that come in with no, with no documents need to go from this country. They need to be thrown out of this country, deported. There's no way they can stay here. When I'm sitting at home here paying colossal amounts of money for gas and everything else, these people are sitting in there heating their arses. Government, politicians, they're all sitting up there. They all lie to you. They're all there. They're all there just to gaslight us. And we will not be gaslit anymore. We need this to stop. We need all of these people. Oh, Jesus. We need the whole of Ireland, all the concerned parents in Ireland need to get out. Stop watching Netflix. Stop drinking your shit and doing what you're doing. You need to get out here and you need to protest on every one of these. I've been on the East Wall protest. I've been standing outside Mount Joy for Enoch Burke, another man who is, who is in, in prison for 42 days tomorrow for nothing, for misgendering somebody. We should have known when Leo Varadkar took over. Every one of our state bodies, the guards there, there's the guards, rainbow flags. There's the, the and, and, and there's the army, all rainbow flags. Leo Varadkar wants to get rid of our national anthem and our flag and bring in our one world rainbow flag. That's not going to happen in my country. It's never going to happen in my country. And I hope everybody stands up to this and everybody has to stand up. Aaron Gubra. Very good. Thank you very much, Gora Magata, Karja Gill, for everybody coming here today. The next time we'll have a bit more advanced planning. And I'd like to thank everybody for coming. What I would ask you to do. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Amory asked me to say that in, Re in Redeemer Hall in Dundalk this Tuesday, which I believe is the what, 13th. Uh, Redeemer Hall between 6 and 7.30. There's a public meeting to discuss immigration. All the local TDs have been asked. It's a public meeting, and I would ask everybody who's concerned about what's going on in Ireland in the last, well, few years, especially the last eight months, to come along and to participate in a public meeting. We, as a party, the Irish Freedom Party, believes in free speech, not in government-controlled speech, and the people should be free to be able to speak their mind and discuss the problems that we have in the country. So I would ask you to come along. Gordon Margaretson, thank you very much. I just want to say a couple of things before we finish off. The people that I talk to on the ground are telling me that they're sitting at home in their houses putting 80 euros into a gas meter and still sitting with no gas, with their oven open to get heat. I am living in an estate at the moment in Dublin, in Dundalk, and it's actually a, a go green estate. Go green. Eamon Ryan better hope I don't catch up with him, or he'll go green with fright when he sees me coming. So, as I say, we are sitting in an estate paying the highest premiums in the country for gas, 
42 cent a kilowatt and the average household in, in Ireland is paying between 10 and 13 cent a kilowatt. We are being ripped off and it's time that this stopped. They don't care about Carlin Hall. All they keep saying about in Carlin Hall is, oh, we're trying to get this and we're trying to get that and they're making every excuse under the book. Now is the time to do something. Stand up and be counted because there's people in Carlin Hall coming to me telling me, Amory, will you stand up for me? We are here in the mornings. We can't put our heating on because we can't afford it before our children go to school. When they come home in the evening, they can't put it on at night before they go to bed because they can't afford it at the rate it's going. Now, remember, your ESB has gone up. Your gas has gone up. Your household budget, everything has gone up. But, but your wages and they're sitting in there for free getting everything for free. This has to and it must stop and it must stop today. And what we have to do to do it, we're going to do it. So that's it now. Days of being nice are over because nice isn't working. And we've seen that in the last three years when we have led the members of the Irish public and all around the world a merry dance. Well, the days of merry dancing with the Irish public are over and you can take that from me. And if you want to come in front of us, come ahead. Because by God, by the time you do, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready. And there'll be no putting us down. Thank you.